Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today Television. I'm Sakshi Batra, and this is the Earnings Special Edition, where our focus will be on PNB Housing Finance's Q2 performance. Uh, remember, it's been a robust quarter for the housing finance company. We've seen a 5.6% uh, increase in the top line revenue, a remarkable 22.6% rise in the profit over year-on-year -year basis. We've also seen that the operational efficiency has also improved for the company on a year-on-year -year basis. It has increased by 27.3% on a year-on-year. -year basis indicating that the rising costs uh, uh, that uh, the company has uh, been able to address as well. What we've also seen is that the operating income has also marked a positive trajectory up by about 4.4% on the uh, from the last quarter onwards and 10.2% on a year-on-year -year basis as well. That also is uh, looking at an enhancing of the core operational performance for the company as well. Let's now welcome the guest on the show to speak to us about the key insights uh, from the earnings as well as an outlook going forward from here. Mr. Girish Kowski, the MD and the CEO of PNB Housing Finance, is now joining in on the show with us. Warm welcome to you, sir, and thank you so much for taking the time out for this discussion. Uh, well, first up, congratulations, strong set of earnings coming in for you, and he is also wishing you season's greetings ahead of uh, upcoming Diwali as well. Uh, diving straight uh, right in, help us understand uh, what are the key factors that have supported in this quarter and what's the outlook for the uh, second half of this year, sir, now. Well, good morning, Sakshi, and happy Diwali to you and your colleagues. Uh, it was a very good quarter. Uh, so we have first on growth on retail, we have shown growth of 16.2%. This is against guidance of 17%. If you look at last quarter, it was 14.4 and last year it was 14.1 and last to last year was 10%. So in last two, two and a half years, we really worked on retail and the growth is now back. We are at 16.2. And if you look at PAT, the growth is 23%. If you look at uh, disbursements, uh, we have shown growth of 28% YOY. I think overall it's a very good quarter. Margins are stable. NPA has come down. Uh, the skew towards uh, affordable and emerging, which gives us a higher yield, you know, has taken off very well. We have crossed uh, 3,000 crores in affordable book. Emerging book is now 12,500. I think it's trending very, very well. Good on growth. Book has grown. Disbursements have grown. Margin stable. PAT is growing. ROA is now 2.54. I think overall it's a fantastic quarter. And we look forward for a great quarter in the next couple of quarters. That's quarter three and quarter four of the financial year. Okay, sir. Help me understand as far as the NII is concerned, sir. What is uh, the kind of trajectory that you expect on NII? It's been about 1.2% or growth on a year-on-year -year basis this time around. Uh, do you see uh, levers further ahead to see it uh, further upgrading from here on? And also on the margins front, sir, what is the expectation? So if you look at our corporate book, which used to be almost about 18,000 crores, you know, since we had stress on the corporate book, we had stopped doing business. Yeah. So the impact on NI and revenue is largely because of corporate. If you look at retail, retail is doing extremely well. Yeah. Now, corporate book, we ran down the book, now it is down to 1,500 crores. And the NPA also, which was 23%, now it is zero. So I think uh, going forward, uh, you know, we should see NI going up, revenue going up. And we plan to start corporate in two to three months' time. I think even corporate business should aid us on the growth and also on the revenue and profitability. In terms okay. of margin, in terms of margin, we have guided 3.5%. I think for last few quarters, you know, it's in the range of 3.6 to 3.65, 3.68. We'll be able to maintain margin between 3.6 to 3.65 for next two, three quarters' time. And after that, we should see uh, NIMS going up. Okay, so you did say how retail is actually a very strong performer. We've actually seen strong growth on that front. Uh, any specific segments that are driving this retail growth going forward also? Where do you see the outperformance coming in from? And uh, like you pointed out, your guidance of 17%, are you looking forward to beating that in FY25? If you look at the entire retail segment, there are four segments, uh, super prime, prime, uh, emerging and affordable. We focus on three segments, that is prime, emerging and affordable. All the three are doing very well. Affordable, you know, if you look at the book, why we have grown by 300%. And if you look at emerging, it is 23%. And prime is about 11%. If you look at disbursements, uh, affordable, uh, why why growth is 68%. And uh, on emerging, it's about 31%. 
and prime is 22%. So all the segments are doing well, but our focus is more on affordable and emerging simply because these two would come at a higher yield. Prime is a large segment for us and we would be focused on prime, but it will be more of a balancing number. Today our book is about uh, 68,000 crores on the retail side. Our plan is to take it up to 1 lakh crore by FI27. If you look at the mix between segments within retail in FI27, affordable will be 15,000 crores, emerging will be 25,000 crores and the balance 60,000 crores will be prime. So our focus is on all the three segments but a little bit more on affordable and emerging because of the margins. Okay. Okay. And in terms of geographical growth, sir, are you seeing some stronger demand from metros? Uh, and how is it in tier 2, tier 3 cities and the rural areas as well? We are seeing uh, demand across, you know, metros, uh, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. Uh, it is more of a segmental approach. Uh, for us, uh, you know, affordable, we do more business in tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 and tier 4. Uh, in terms of emerging, the focus is largely on tier 1 and 2. In terms of prime, it is metro top cities and part of uh, tier 1. In terms of geography, south is trending very well for us. I think south, we are close to about 38% in the mix, followed by north, which is 33 and west is little less than 30%. Okay, sir, so talk to us about the festive demand so far. We have been in the midst of this peak uh, festive season during Navratris, your peak days. What has the demand been and uh, any uh, impact of that already being seen on the loan disbursements? So, if you look at the market, I think demand is quite robust, you know, since last couple of years. Number two, with, with festive season, you know, coming in, I think demand will further go up. And number three, uh, PMAY, ISS, interest subsidy scheme, I think that will be a big boost to uh, no, uh, increase in demand because that will be uh, close to one crore customers will get the benefit of subsidy in next five years, which means every year it's about 20 lakh customers, which is huge. And it's going to help all the housing finance companies predominantly focusing on affordable and emerging. So it's going to be really very good. Next three to four years, we see, you know, very good uh, demand in the space. Okay. So also help us understand um, on the rate cut uh, expectations, what is it that you personally have? Uh, we've already seen rate cuts start uh, globally, especially in the US now. All eyes will be on RBI. Uh, do you really see rate cuts coming in this year or will it be pushed to next year? And what are the kind of expectations that you would have on the benefit that would have on the demand uh, for home loans uh, going forward, sir? So uh, definitely rate cut is going to happen. Uh, it will, it might happen uh, in this financial year, maybe in quarter four, and it might continue for a few more quarters. Uh, so it is going to aid us in terms of uh, growth. Uh, however, on the margins, we are insulated because we are uh, increasing uh, our share of origination from affordable and emerging. So I think long run rate cut is going to definitely help. And for us, even in the short term, it's going to help us. And right. there will be, there'll be some lag effect, I think, which we will be able to manage. Okay. Uh, so also, lastly, I want to understand uh, with the PMAY interest subsidy scheme expected to benefit close to 1 crore customers over the next 4-5 years, how well are you positioning yourself to capture this opportunity and to increase your market share now? We are geared up today. We have 303 branches. In next uh, three years, by FI27, we'll be adding another 200 branches. So we'll get to 500 branches by FI27. As of now, all the 303 branches are geared up to do uh, you no know, schemes under PMAY. So we are geared up, and it's going to help us. And all the three, starting from affordable, emerging, and prime, it will be less in prime, more in affordable and emerging. But we are geared up. Okay, well, thank you so much, Mr. Kowski, for being with us on this special edition to share with us the insights from your quarterly earnings. I wish you all the best for the upcoming quarters too. And thank you so much. I truly appreciate your time always on Business Today Television. And here's once again wishing from the entire team of Business Today Television that you have a fantastic Diwali ahead, sir. Thank you so much and wish you the same.
Thank you so much. With that, viewers, we wrap up this very special earnings edition. I hope that uh, you've got some clarity as to which way the management is uh, looking forward to driving the company going forward from here. The key factors that are supporting the sentiments as well as the earnings at this point in time and uh, the way forward from here on uh, for the housing finance company. Do stay tuned. We will be continuing to get you all the exciting conversations around earnings as well as festivities through the course of the day. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.